It's a Sin is a five-part miniseries from Channel 4, created by Russell T Davis, which aims to strike a difficult balance of celebrating the liberation and freedom of London's gay scene in the 1980s without shying away from the horrors of that freedom being robbed by the AIDS epidemic. A semi-autobiographical piece, Davis takes people he'd known from that time with their stories and experiences to create a vivid and bright depiction of gay life in London, with a diverse cast of distinct characters and personalities which brings the fun and the memories that were created in that time and place to life, which have largely been forgotten beneath the spectre of HIV. Ollie Alexander, who I think has just been cast as Doctor Who, plays Richie, a student leaving his staunchly traditional family on the Isle of Wight to go to university in London, where his eyes are immediately opened. Richie makes a really interesting main character because he's definitely the most complex member of the cast. When we meet him, he's positive, naturally friendly and endlessly charismatic, but we see that these traits go hand in hand with his egotistical narcissism. It's not really worth looking at him as someone who's either good or bad, it's more about understanding that when things are going well for him, he's really sweet and caring, but as soon as he's up against it, these retract and he becomes incredibly self-centred. The story of It's a Sin is really about knowing that and seeing how the events of the story affect his impulses, both good and bad. You'd be forgiven for forgetting that It's a Sin is a story about AIDS in its first few episodes, as the story is busy setting the scene with Richie exploring both the capital and his sexuality for the first time, which allows the show to introduce its other main players. Roscoe, a totally flamboyant crossdresser, escaping his religious family who want to send him to conversion therapy in Nigeria, and who can uncannily blend into any social scenario. Colin, a totally non-flamboyant apprentice tailor from Wales, who just really seems to be happy to be around the others and keeps to himself, defining himself more by his job than his sexuality. Ash, Richie's on-again, off-again love interest who seemingly doesn't have anything else going on in his life. And Jill, the group mom who looks after the boys, whose slight degree of separation from their let's say, sexual proclivities, allows her to retain some objectivity throughout the situation giving us a window into these characters' lives as they finally discover a sense of belonging which had always eluded them, symbolised by the home that they literally create together, gives us the impression of how important their finding of each other and a place where they can truly be themselves really is. But a surprise turn of events involving Colin's mentor, played by Neil Patrick Harris with a surprisingly convincing English accent, reminds us of the shadow of disease encroaching on the good times. The story doesn't shy away from the bleakness of AIDS, and by building up its main cast and the freedom they've discovered, the audience understands what they have to lose. It's not just about what AIDS does to their bodies, but their community as well. But on top of that, the show explores the paranoia and scepticism which existed at the time, which until watching this show, I'd never really considered. It's a Sin does an incredible job of demonstrating why those at the time were so dismissive of a disease we now accept as a grim reality. We see in Richie his reactionary disbelief to a virus being broadcasted by the media as a gay cancer, but also his reluctance to admit that AIDS is real when it means accepting just how fragile the liberty he enjoys as a gay man really is. It obviously wasn't written with this intention, but there are obvious parallels with recent events, and it's impressive just how sympathetic It's a Sin can make characters who are decrying the threat of a new virus as a hoax and a conspiracy when you're watching in 2021. As I mentioned earlier, Jill remains the most objective character throughout the series and is the first to really recognise the dangers that AIDS poses, cluing herself up and doing research to put herself in the best position to take care of those affected by the disease, despite the obvious physical and emotional toll it takes on her own life. The series hits harder towards the end when the realities of HIV become unavoidable. It hones in not just on the bodily impacts, but on the feelings of shame and helplessness felt by those afflicted by it. Even among those who were proud or comfortable in their sexuality, there persisted a tendency to blame themselves, as though they somehow deserved it, and it was a shame that was spread and carried within the community. For Richie, the gay scene was somewhere where he could be himself, but it was also partially an escape from the shame he felt from his parents over who he was. And AIDS made avoiding that shame an impossibility. 
When the parents of various characters do come into the picture, we hear the same denials of their son's sexuality, how they hadn't raised them to be gay, how it must just be a phase, or how they were corrupted or misled by the other boys. We also see how controlling these parents can be, dismissing the friends who up until this point had been the ones caring for and supporting their sons through this illness. It stems from the ignorance and distrust which existed back then and just how squarely gay people were blamed for AIDS in the 1980s. I mean, when I was growing up they also blamed Africans, which isn't really any better, but I'd like to think that most people are a bit better clued up today. And that's partly what this show is. It's a partial education on a complicated issue that existed at a specific period, but also it's a personal reflection from someone who was there at the time. The legacy that It's a Sin wants to impart isn't just that we understand the impact that AIDS had on the gay community, but that we also recognise and celebrate the people who made that community what it was. The memories they created were real, and whatever happened afterwards doesn't erase them. The show is a difficult watch but for all the right reasons, putting us through some incredible highs and heartbreaking lows with some exceptional personal performances, stylish directing and intelligent writing. It's a personal piece which pulls you into its world even if you aren't that familiar with the subject or the period, and keeps you invested with a real heart and a charm that can't be ignored and should never be forgotten.